Back to Israel, actually, where we're sitting here right now. Um, news of the Pension Fund of the United Method Church, which services more than 7 million members in the United States, announced it is divesting from five Israeli banks and an Israeli constru construction firm because of their involvement in settlement construction in the West Bank. The Israeli ones are among a total of 39 companies the fund blacklisted due to their failure to meet its human rights investment policy guidelines. Before we break this down into in, into many many directions, <clears throat> I'm glad to go. Um, I'm glad to go straight on the phone to Tucson, Arizona, where we're joined, sorry, via Skype by Jim Nibelnik, the member of the steering committee of United Methodist Cairo's Response and a board member of the general board of Church and Society for the United Methodist Church. Church, good morning to you, Jim. Good morning. Thank you for the invitation. Now, thank you for joining us this morning. I want to read to you a, a, um, basically a statement that came out yesterday from the BDS movement. Um, the BDS movement came out yesterday after the decision by the Methodist Church was made, saying that the BNC congratulates the United Methodist Chorus Response Group within the Church for its relentless and effective leadership in raising awareness among Methodist communities about Palestinian rights and the need for the Church to end all its investment in companies that profit from Israel's occupation and and human rights viola violations. Why did the church go ahead with this move? Well, I'm, I'm speaking for the United Methodist Kairos response and Sorry, Kairos response. not for our General Board of Pensions, but they, uh, the guidelines that the General Board of Pensions and Health Benefits uses talks about uh, human rights and humanitarian situations all around the world, and they look for uh, investments that they might have made or they would like to avoid making when they see a situation that involves uh, human rights abuses, such as the ones they perceive are going on in the uh, occupied territories of the West Bank. Now, do, do you also know, no, though, that there are elements from within the BDS movement that also do not recognize Israel's right to exist at all, which is one of the things that is making a lot of people in Israel upset this morning? Well, we speak only to the human rights and the human dignity that's involved. Uh, we're not speaking about Israel per se, and so we don't comment on that. We limit our concerns to those humanitarian needs that we perceive in the world, and we believe that the church should be investing in places where there are not problems with human rights and divesting from places where we perceive there are issues. And when it comes to uh, reactions after this decision was made, what were the reactions in and around the United States to this decision? We've had a good deal of support from around the country, uh, from some other denominations of the Christian Church, also from organizations like the Jewish Voice for Peace. Uh, and so we, we anticipate more as the, the news gets out farther. It's only been announced for about one day here. So I'm going to ask one day. Now, because, you know, I'm, we're speaking from Israel, and this decision was making headlines all across the country as something, you know, that really destabilizes, and, and I'm quoting, destabilizes Israel's um, uh, position in the world and its right to exist. What would be your message then, after a decision as such, to the leaders of Israel? Well, I think we're speaking to any place in the world where we perceive that human rights abuses are going on. And we do not want, as a church, as a global United <laughs> Methodist Church, to be making profits from companies that do business uh, in areas where there are human rights abuses. So we are speaking for ourselves to companies, and we are talking to them uh, by taking action to divest of, of investments or stock in those operations. We are not divesting from Israel per se. Uh, we are dealing with only the human rights abuses that we perceive. Jim, I want to thank you very much for joining us on this very late hour for you from Tucson, Arizona. Now, the church's decision has only fed the flames of the already searing debate here in Israel over foreign intervention in government policy and who's to blame for it. Though divestment is probably the softest aspect of BDS, or the BDS trifecta, so to speak, the others being boycott and sanctions for many, it represents a far greater threat. Let's first take a look at Tal, at Tal Shalev's I-24 News diplomatic correspondent report. Break it down from there. It is billed as one of the biggest threats to the Jewish state, widely described as an orchestrated Arab campaign to destroy Israel. 
The anti-Israel boycott, divestment and sanctions campaign, otherwise known as BDS, has been a topic of Israeli concern for years. Seeking to pressure Israel to withdraw from the West Bank, the campaign targets Israeli economic, cultural and academic ties. In Jerusalem's eyes, it has one goal, to take the whole country down. BDS has been around for more than a decade, but this year, Israel's alarm about it reached new heights. First, the Palestinian Authority tried to ban Israel from the World FIFA Football Association. Then, Orange's CEO announced he sought to cut ties with Israel. The November European decision to label settlement products increased the sense of urgency that the pressure is only going to increase. BDS. 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 BDS is also one of the most popular political topics, as evidenced by the packed house at a special conference held by the Knesset caucus to fight delegitimization this week. In an extremely fractured parliament, the coalition and opposition agree this is not about policy, but rather a battle for Israel's legitimacy. It's kind of jihad. It's jihad with a suit, with a nice faces, but it's still jihad. Yeah, we're dealing with an organization that is the, the spearhead of an international effort to delegitimize Israel, to deny us the right to defend ourselves. We cannot uh, uh, ignore it. We should recognize that there is certain power in the BDS. And if we don't want to let it grow, we have to fight and to struggle against BDS. The government recently allocated $25 million to the Strategic Affairs Ministry, assigned to build a task force which will coordinate the efforts against the BDS campaign, up to now managed by numerous ministries and NGOs. For Jerusalem, this is a war, and it intends to fight back. In Jerusalem, it's a war, but also the growing international pressure has led to increasing divisions within the Israeli society between the far left, who consider BDS as a legitimate and legal form of opposition to the occupation, and the right, who see it as an existential threat and accuse those who support it of treason. Now, on the front lines of the ideological battles are NGOs, human rights groups, who are active in monitoring reporting Israeli abuses in the West Bank, and they're vilified for airing Israel's dirty laundry. They're accused of being in the pay of foreign governments and turning Israeli soldiers into criminals in the eyes of the world. New legislations in the works would have them tagged, labeled when working in parliament. Their ranks have been infiltrated by activists from the opposite camp. Joining me in studio is a Likud um, uh, member, Yoav Kish, and actually Parliament, Minister of Parliament, Likud member Yoav Kish. I want to thank you for joining us this morning. It's a very complex issue. It's a very emotional issue for many, many people. But you're also of the support of anybody that is of a, an NGO that supports human rights or supports the left-wing agenda to also be labeled in many ways, no? By the way, it's general law. It doesn't say left or right. We're talking about general organizations that are being sponsored by foreign governments should be. This is a proof. We believe that that shows a foreign agenda that should be announced. That's it. That's the first step, that if we see foreign countries put money into organization, these organizations, we should know about them. Should know about them, and then what? What do they do? If then they're doing one of these actions against the state of Israel, then these are a reason to provoke Israel. And then if they provoke Israel in that sense, then they are legitimate to be canceled as an NGO. For example, if they're attacking the, the proof, this is already by the law, by the I mean, way. I understand. If they're against Israel being a Jewish and democratic state, if they're incitement, if they're pushing for the only uh, change that we add to the law, the existed law, is if they're dealing with terror, of course, and the only change is if they're pushing to put Israel soldiers and international court laws. We believe that the Israel soldiers should be judged here. There's a very strong uh, judgment system here in Israel, and we don't see any reason why people are trying to get. You said about uh, laundry, dirty laundry. It's not dirty laundry, it's lies. I, I'm, I'm quoting uh, okay. things that were said in the so, Israeli parliament. So we're, why we're, are, it's why not put dirty, it outside? No, that, that's not the issue. The issue, li listen, I was volunteering myself to human rights organization, but the difference is that this human rights organization, we are sit sitting in watches and we look at things, and if we see something that is wrong, first we talk to the commander at the, at the specific location. You're talking about breaking the silence about a specific human rights organization. Not about them. I'm talking about an, an, a right-wing organization for human rights. And then if there's a problem, we take it to the investigating police of the army. That's the way they should act, not take it and go to the UN. We invite them, this organization, to the Knesset, to the parliament, to discuss its issues, they didn't come. If we were in the UN, they would rush to a meeting. Well, like I mean, and, and, and of course, just to get the diverging opinions on this, yesterday, for example, an organization called the New Israel Front, which is a large philanthropic organization that also sponsors many of the active rights groups, decided 
to attempt to put up a fight, so to speak, to this law. <coughs> sorry, to, pardon me, to this law that um, uh, Minister Yavkish has just sorry, the member of um, Parliament Yavkish just mentioned. So. Their campaign, their campaign video, has basically put out a notion uh, talking about incitement and trailed back to the idea that the Israeli Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin was assassinated due to exactly the same thing that we're hearing right now, which is labeling people with certain diverging opinions. And again, I'm quoting other sources. I'm joined on the phone now also by the former president of the New Israel Fund and former Merits um, <coughs> and, for, and former Merits Party um, uh, member Naomi Chazan. Ms. Chazan, I want to thank you very much for joining us this morning. I don't know if you had a chance to listen to what was going on in the studio right now, but when it comes to this divergence between right and left at this point, what would be your argument to people within the Israeli, you know, current right-wing government who say that all these activities are anti-Israeli? Anti uh, they're anti the, the maybe uh, question the policy of the present government, but to the best of my knowledge, Israel is still a democracy. And criticism and dissent are essential uh, parts of democratic life. What's been taking place uh, in recent months is uh, is simply unbelievable. Uh, there is an intimation that uh, civil rights and human rights groups are pro BDS. That's absolutely not correct. In 95 percent of the cases, the major groups that are being uh, uh, assaulted now and and brought up in in the most horrendous ways uh, to public public opprobrium uh, are are groups that perceive themselves as patriotic, as my of Knesset Kishu is sitting in in uh, your studio at this very moment at this very moment there's a, mm -hmm. a, at this a, there's an intimation or a suggestion that uh, civil rights and human rights and civil society organizations are uh, in one way or another agents of foreign government no, and that's uh, that's ridiculous. No, 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 Ms. Kazan, yeah, oh, just one second, because we do have with us in studio, um, and you have Kish, I want to ask you that th the same thing. The argument that that, that Nomi Khazan is putting up, that many will argue, not just from overseas but from within also, that all these notions of anti-Israeli, of activities that go against the good of the country, sound very undemocratic. No, listen. We in the right also have extremists, and when we saw things that were unbearable, all the right as one group came against it and announced it well. so they, they, against the uh, wedding the, the the pictures of that awful wedding everybody in the right announced that pictures and that actions the thing is when it happens in the left and we saw Ezra Nawi that actually almost uh, this involves crimes crimes against Palestinians that this supposed to be an activist a left extreme activist is doing this instead of them announcing and saying this is something that shouldn't be done and provoke their hands from this guy yeah, in instead of that but, but they're hugging him they're but, saying that this is acceptable that what he's doing is part of the world of democracy I think they're wrong in that case that should announce but, it clearly by all the left and the right together but other than just announcing if announcing that certain activities are un-Israeli un isn't that undemocratic I'm going back no. I'm, 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 I'm for having different uh, voices. Israel is a strong democracy. In no other country around us, people like Nomi and, uh, and their supporters could act. And it's only in Israel, so we're supportive of that. But we need to we see. Could, we need to see where the money comes seconds. from. We need to and see. if it comes from different and states, sadly we're off that's here. different in interests. Okay, but I want to thank you for joining us thank this morning. Much. I really do want to thank you for joining us this morning.